Michigan State takes on Iowa at Breslin Center. So we get to know about those Hawkeyes with Trent Condon of Locked on Hawkeyes. But first, yes, Michigan State's 10th assistant coach has been hired. Dyron Reynolds is the new defensive line coach. Let's go. Our Locked on Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Spartan friends, Spartan family, thank you so much for tuning in to Locked on Spartans, your team in green and white, five days a week here in the Locked on Podcast Network. And before going any further, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked on. Make every moment matter more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on today to get started. Now, it was going to be a full show with Trent Condon of Locked on Hawkeyes today. We're going to talk about our program, talk about their program. But, hey, in the middle of this beautiful snowy day here in Michigan, we were blanketed with some coaching news out of East Lansing. And, yes, after Marco Coleman left the staff to go back to his alma mater at Georgia Tech, there was this opening on the staff of that 10th assistant coach. But open no more as Dyron Reynolds becomes Michigan State's defensive line coach filling in the same role that Marco Coleman left behind. And this is a man that has been coaching for the better part of 25 years on the defensive side of the ball. He's done college. He's done pro. And now, well, he's going to be doing some more college ball in East Lansing. Let's get the quote from Mel Tucker. Quote, I've known Dyron Reynolds for more than 15 years. He's one of the best coaches in the business. He has impressive pedigree, having worked for some of the top coaches in all of football, including Tony Dungy, Leslie Frazier, David Shaw, and Jim Caldwell, and his coach in both the Super Bowl and college football playoff. That is correct. He coached for one year down at Oklahoma in that 2015-16 season. Clearly made an impact. The Sooners made the college football playoff then. And also that Super Bowl was with the Indianapolis Colts for the 2006-2007 season. And according to Wikipedia, which, yeah, what is not to like about Wikipedia? We'll just believe anything they say. Tony Dungy credited Dyron Williams with really developing Dwight Freeney into being the player that he was for Indianapolis, which is a pretty good player if you've heard the name Dwight Freeney. So ever since then, yes, moved up into the college ranks, has spent his last seven seasons seasons at Stanford, and that includes coaching Solomon Thomas, a guy who was drafted third overall after his time at Stanford, and also uh, Reynolds has coached three additional defensive line draft picks as well. He made an All-American out of Harrison Phillips um, in, as well. So, yeah, there you have it. A guy that's been coaching for the better part of more than two decades, has known Mel Tucker for 15 years. No, they did not go in-house with Kevin Vickerson. They're bringing in the more established coach. Uh, as far as his coaching experience goes, obviously Kevin Vickerson had plenty of experience playing in the NFL. But when a guy like Dyron Reynolds comes along, very hard to turn down. Safe to say that this is a good hire. Mel Tucker thinks so. That's the most important guy in the equation here. So, yes, welcome to East Lansing, Die Ron Reynolds. Now that you got the low down on him, let's take a look at this basketball game between our Spartans and the Hawkeyes with Trent Condon of Locked on Hawkeyes. Trent, how on earth are we doing? Not, not just personally. We obviously mm-hmm. care about that. Hope you're having a good day. But just as a Hawkeye fan... How are you doing so far with this season so far? You know, it, it's been such an interesting run throughout the course of this year. They got off to a nice start at the beginning of the year. Now they're playing tomato cans, and this is what they do. But one thing in the McCaffrey era, and the reason that year after year, a lot of people wonder, why are they so good in the net every single year? Why does Ken mm-hmm. Palm, you know, those efficiency numbers? Because they take on these awful teams, but they not just beat them. They club them. They beat okay. them by 30, 40, 50 te- points. And though, yes, point of margin in the net is capped at 10 the efficiency numbers are not capped and that's why you see year after year their numbers be so good so they got off to a good start uh, played in their exempt tournament they went down to florida took on clemson beat them clemson came back in the second half made it tight iowa ultimately won that game and at the time we thought clemson stunk it's like oh boy sure. then they get their boards doors beaten in by tcu and it was a lot of the question marks that started to crop up got on the right foot, started to feel better. They beat Iowa State at home by 20. They shoot lights out, feeling good. And then they have maybe the most inexplicable loss of anybody in the Big Ten 
as they fell at home to Eastern Illinois, a team ranked in the 350s at Ken Pomeroy. It'll be a quad four loss. It's an anchor on the resume overall. They yeah. lose that one, start 0-3 in the Big Ten, and uh, it's a lost season. And then they rip off four in a row, <laughs> and we're right, right back to where we are. <laughs> so it, it's been a very much an up-and-down type of season for Iowa. A lot of inconsistencies. They've had injuries that they've dealt with. So it's just been it's been very difficult to just get mm -hmm. a read on this team, what exactly they are. Are they the team that maybe can finally break that down that door and get to a Sweet 16? A lot of people have had those thoughts at different points of the year. Or okay. is this a team that's going to be on the outside looking in just for the NCAA tournament? And as we sit here today, that's kind of where we are with this Iowa team. We're, we're just trying to still figure it out in late January. So is it safe to say that Thursday's game is kind of the litmus test? Or do you still want to see a little bit larger of a sample size even beyond this nice run that you guys are on right now to really get confident that okay maybe you know things are in a good place with this program so the losing streak comes to an end over the weekend to ohio state didn't play well defensively and that's been something that's always been kind of a part of iowa basketball under McCaffrey. Sure. really yeah. good offensively struggle a lot of times defensively and a lot of those bad defensive things started to pop up on saturday now you go on the road again to michigan state it's been a house of horrors uh, we yeah. uh, had the 30 year anniversary of the passing of chris street i'm sure uh, some older smarty fans will remember that game i was first game after his passing was at michigan state Gotcha. Preslin Center was just a couple years old, went in there down 14 with under four to play, and Iowa comes back and gets the victory in a hugely emotional one. Iowa hadn't won another game until just two years ago at the Breslin Center. Wow. And there's been some good Iowa teams that have come in there yeah. and not just lost, but got obliterated, just absolutely <laughs> run off the floor. So you couple with getting that first loss to Ohio State in a while, coupled with now going to Michigan State. I, I think it's a tense time. It's a tense time for Iowa knowing this is not one when you're kind of w and and things and looking at hey, what do we need to do to be at least a tournament team. This is not one that many people are putting in the win column. How about you gotcha. guys over there at Michigan State? Give us a, kind of the Hawkeye yeah. fans a little overview where you guys are. You know what? I'm going to say the same thing that 10 other teams in the Big Ten are saying, and we're doing fine. Uh, you know, it's it, it's okay. It's, it's, it's solid. You know, things are fine. But no, I mean, what is really the thorn in our side is two things. Uh, the first is injuries. Look, Malik Hall has been in and out. Right now he is out with a foot injury. It was, you know, after he hurt his foot again against Illinois a few weeks ago that, okay, well, he's done for the season. Like, this is it. They, they might even amputate the foot, for crying out loud. Like, it was, it was not looking good. And then... Days go past, and, well, here we are sitting here recording Wednesday afternoon, and it, it looks like that he could play a little bit. I'm sure it'll be a game-time decision, just like there's a player on your team that has a game-time decision that we'll get to in a little bit. But he is very important to this team because it is night and day what this team can do with and without him. And not even just from a skill perspective, obviously, you know, good post game he's got a solid shot but just what he means leadership wise to this team also early in the year you know he missed eight games Jaden Aikens missed some but when those guys are fine and Michigan State is at full strength they can compete with any team that they play I mean we just saw that not too long ago against Purdue lost in last possession but yeah at the end of the day though you are what your record is and right now that's just every other record in the Big Ten a team with three or four losses so far in conference play, unless you're well, Minnesota or Purdue for the right reasons. So yeah, we're, we're fine, Trent. We're fine. Yeah. Everybody just sitting in the middle between number yeah. two and number 12 in the league. And, and that's what it is. And it'll be fun to see you know, what we have tomorrow night. What, What's the environment going to be? You know, we think of the Izzo, we, we think of the loudness yeah. of it. And, and what, what's the environment been like both this year? And what do you anticipate for the game tomorrow night? I, I think it's been awesome. I mean, we'll never get back to the is zone of the mid 2000s. But, you know, there's that little downswing. It kind of yeah. maybe when I was a student there, 2010, 2014, where, you know, all the old heads are being like, oh, you guys have gotten soft. I really think it's been good lately in the is zone. And maybe that has something to do with uh, that COVID year and even the year after where masks are mandated inside of Breslin Center. And this is the first year back where it's like, yeah, the energy has returned fully. Let's just take the lid off this thing. It's like shaking up a soda bottle for, oh God, you know, two years and then just unloading the cap. I really think there has been a lot of energy here. And also what doesn't help Iowa is that I, Fran McCaffrey, I don't think villain is the right word, but he is a character, so to speak, right? And his temper has flared yeah. up at Breslin Center and there's nothing, there's nothing the Breslin Center crowd loves more than when a coach's temper flares up. They'll get on him. That just parlays to more energy the rest of the game. So yeah, I mean, I was always a, a fun team to have come in because also, like you mentioned earlier, it's been really good for Michigan State to play Iowa at Breslin Center lately. So hopefully that 
an old streak can continue here. I uh, wouldn't hate to see that on my side of the microphone, at least. Well, and you can understand, and I don't have big expectations coming into this one. We'll see the point spread sure. will come out on FanDuel either later today or tomorrow, obviously before the game. Uh, they have it right now, four point at Ken Pomeroy, which is usually pretty gotcha. close to what we'll see with those FanDuel numbers. I'll tell you, I'll be I'll be laying the points with Sparty, and we'll kind of break things down a little bit okay. more, I know, <laughs> as we continue. Speaking of the student section, though, there's a chance Patrick McCaffrey is going to play. We'll talk about that a little bit more also coming yeah. up here, but... But as it pertains to that, kind of a delicate situation here. Yeah, totally. I, I'm going to guess student sections of past would have been all over something like this. A guy taking a break with with you know taking yeah. a mental pause and but in today's environment and the way that kids are today, I wonder how what it's going to be like. Do you anticipate anything coming from the zone if Patrick does play? I don't think so. And if it does, it, it'll be, you know, two or three bad actors, I'm sure. But it like it is more than a game. Like it really is kind of just like a social experiment, too. Right. I mean, because I think it really is kind of this generation. They have grown up where mental health is more closely looked at and, and treated with care and respect, more importantly, as well. So, yeah, I, I don't think that it'll be a universal, you know, 3000 member is on chanting anything just horrible at him. Mm -hmm. But maybe 10 years ago, that is what you oh, get yeah. or something crazy like that. So, yeah. So, no, I don't think so. It, it will be disappointing to hear if anything happens. And if it does, it, it, it's it's hopefully – well, no, the number's hopefully zero. <laughs> but if something You're happens, right. then hopefully it's, it's kept to a low number and then people you know jump on that person. So, I, yeah, I, I don't anticipate it. And it will be a little disappointed too. But, yeah, it, it, just a fascinating, fascinating underlying storyline here. If Patrick does play, which you know we're going to get to – as we keep saying in a minute here, do you want to, should, should we, should we start getting into the nitty gritty here after this uh, short little note from uh, FanDuel? Do you want to? Yeah, that sounds great. Get into this. Let's get nuts here. Hey, you know what? Trent's talked about it. We're about to talk about it. It is FanDuel Sportsbook. The NFL playoffs are here. It is going to be an awesome weekend. Two incredible games. And we are really excited about our new sports betting partner for Lockdown because they are the number one sports book in America. You guessed it. It's FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, well, we got good news for you. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. New customers, join today and get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash Lockdown. And FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spread to player props. They'll even have the lines and everything that you need for Spartans versus Hawkeyes as well. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash Locked on College. And plus, you can even combine your bets for a chance to win a bigger payout with Same Game Parlay. It's all in an app that's safe, secure, super easy to use, and you get paid quick. You're not sitting around for days at a time wondering when the money's going to come. Not with FanDuel. So football fans, don't miss out. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets win or lose at fanduel.com slash lockdown college make every moment more with fanduel the official sportsbook partner of the nfl you know what i, I, I won't do this for a fourth time you know bring up patrick mccaffrey's name and say hey we'll get to it in a little yeah. bit but he has yeah. missed you know, some time just like we've talked mm -hmm. about if he does play tomorrow it is going to be a game time decision based on all the reports that i've heard mm -hmm. what does he add to this team that has been missing and it is interesting because even when he was missing Iowa banged out a few good wins here. So really, what is it going to be like if he joins the team? You, you know, it's really interesting because Iowa, as soon as he put the pause, they went on that four-game winning streak. Right. His last game out there <laughs> was a loss to Penn State. I was down 20 at the half, came roaring back, had a chance late in the game. But there's something with Patrick that you could tell was off. And talking to the guys that are on the beat, the newspaper guys, the you know website publishers, those kind of places, and they said, knowing Patrick for as long as it has. I mean, you also remember, guys knew him as a young kid and growing up, obviously mm -hmm. the Iowa program as a middle schooler and as a high schooler. So they know him incredibly well and they could just tell something was off with him and he okay. didn't feel right. He didn't look right. And you could see just physically. So this is a young man that has had a ton that has happened starting back in high school when not only cancer and have to go through thyroid treatment because of that, that's a huge component and dealing with that throughout his career. But he also, during that time at, a youngster at the same time as him, same age as him, that passed away. One of his high school gotcha. classmates, a guy that came incredibly close going through that, and he lost him during the same time as he was battling cancer and lost a friend to it. So he's had a lot on his plate. Yeah, did he grow up in a pri privileged background and have your dad be a yeah, basketball coach? Absolutely. But that doesn't mean that there hasn't been things. And you know, yeah. one thing that, that I've kind of talked about and speculated about, you think about him, and every day you wake up, 
and you wake up and you feel a little bit off or you got something going on physically. You're just not feeling right. Well, for us, it's like, eh, I got a little bug. For him, you're thinking as a back. You know, and and that kind of thing, sure. I'm sure, yeah. just has to weigh on all kinds of cancer survivors, not just Tim, but I, I'm sure that's a huge component of it too. The pressure of being the coach's kid and the pressure of maybe not stepping up and, and developing as much as a lot of people hope for. Mm-hmm. Patrick is an incredibly gifted offensive player. And he can get buckets at times. And the loss last year in the NCAA tournament to Richmond, he was the only guy in the second half that was able to do much of anything. He's a skilled offensive player, but there are times that you just wish that the basketball IQ would kind of follow with what you saw with the talent. It feels like for a coach's kid, the basketball IQ doesn't always marry with what he is out there on the basketball floor. He wasn't playing well, wasn't playing up to his capabilities. I'm sure that's a part of it. But again, this is a lot of conjecture and speculation about him ultimately for people that are close to the program and hearing from Fram yesterday talk about his son and his, his player on the team. It sounds like that he is getting back in the right spot. Could it be something? Another part is because of what he's had to do and continues to do with cancer treatments and checkups. You wonder, you know, if there is something that he is taking, you know, for anxiety issues. You know, how does that marry with cancer treatment, things like that, that he's had to do yeah. in the past. So there's just so many layers to this. It's different than than what we've seen in the past and some different players that have done this. And that's why it makes it certainly an interesting story to talk about, but one that we just don't have a ton of answers about right now. And safe to say the star of your team right now, probably Chris Murray, you know, oh, that's crazy. And another Murray <laughs> is having yeah. a great season for Iowa. Is he a carbon copy of his brother Keegan that was drafted in the top three in last year's draft? Or is there a little difference with that game that you could see so far this season? Well, the first thing is they are mirror image, literally, because Keegan right-handed, Chris left-handed. So you got that component. He there is a go. lefty. <laughs> He's, he doesn't have the same inside game that Keegan had he's not the same kind of guy that's going to go on the block and consistently be able to get you points he'll go in there from time to time he's better off the dribble he's a better shooter at least at this point than Keegan was now looking at Keegan the NBA he is the uh, second fastest player to 103 pointers in his career behind only Luka Doncic not not bad company to keep there not bad in his uh, rookie (laughs) season so he has always been more of a little bit more of an outside guy as compared to Keegan when they were growing up, playing both in youth and up through high school. He was a point guard at times. He would handle the ball a lot more. So a little better off the dribble, not as much inside that we get, but he can score in a big time ways. And much like Keegan, he's just so smooth. I mean, so effortless yeah. out there that, boy, you look up and he's got 24 and eight. It just doesn't feel like it. And that's what you get out of him. But you'll see him hit shots. He'll, he'll be out there stepping out there. And since he was lost in speaking of that Eastern Illinois game earlier, he was out that game as he has sustained an injury and in dealing with plantar fasciitis that continues to this day. But, you know, with that, you're going to see a guy that is going to be consistent, fun to watch. He'll get in there. He does a little bit of everything. And he's important because if Chris Murray isn't playing well, frankly, this Iowa basketball team really struggles. He is that important to what they do. Okay. And Michigan State in the last few games has struggled in the paint. They, they face a smattering of teams with anywhere from elite big men to pretty good big men. But even if you're pretty good, that's enough to beat up Michigan State in the post. So with that said, what is your post game like? Are we getting some break here with the Hawkeyes or do you guys have someone in the paint? That's just a game record that is going to make us all roll our eyes again. <laughs> uh, it very well could happen because Philip Rebracha has completely blossomed this year. So Rebracha is a guy came in last year. They were looking for help and they went to the transfer portal, got him from North Dakota. He was playing up there in the summit league and he was a decent player. His dad played in the NBA, but you know, he looked at him. I think he averaged like six and six last year. He was a starter okay. for the team, not a real big team by any means, but limited offensively. Only six nine had to give up a lot, both in size, both height wise and weight wise, to some guys as we know in the Big Ten. But this year, he has transformed into a completely different player. He's hitting players inside. He's great going over his left shoulder with a little baby hook over the right hand. He's been dominant at times this season. Didn't play great against Ohio State. I don't anticipate back to back bad games from Merbracha. He's just come to that level, anticipate game in and game out. He's going to be there. But if he gets in foul trouble, Look out. There is much behind him. Josh Gundale, gotcha. big wadi. He's a, a London based guy. Comes over. He played prep school. He is a sophomore. He's a fan favorite. He gets in there. He can only play about two minutes at a time because he's big okay. and heavy. <laughs> but he'll go up there and he'll push people around and he'll maybe get him in there. Well, he's been out for the last couple of weeks with a knee injury. The only other okay. big on the roster 
is a young man named Riley Mulvey, six foot eleven from New York. Uh, in fact, went to Iowa last year. Was supposed to be his senior year of high school. Decided to enroll early because they needed some help inside. Didn't play a ton. Hasn't played a ton. Really didn't develop the way that a lot of people thought this summer. But because of Gundelay has been out, he's played spot minutes starting in the Indiana game. You know, two minutes a half, something like that. Two, three minutes. And he's looked competent at times. He's long. He can run. He can dunk. And, and he has a little physicality to him. He's a guy that you hope for ultimately, you know, by a senior year maybe develops. But he's been somewhat of a bright spot here over the last couple of weeks as he's seen a little bit. Here's the other thing. Speaking of Robracha and as good as he is, if he gets in foul trouble, he will not play. Fran McCaffrey, okay. more than any coach in college basketball, he has a hard two foul rule. You look at two foul participation at Ken Pomeroy's numbers every year. I was at the bottom of it. Gotcha. Hard and fast. I've had Fran on my radio show before. I pressed him on it. He's giving me the answer. I completely disagree with his response, but uh, that is something. So I, I would <laughs> guess right away, Michigan State, that's going to be part of the game plan. If we can do something inside, get Robracha in foul trouble, we know. And this is going to be a donut team. They're going to be playing without a middle because Mulvey can't play you know, eight, 12 minutes in a first half, anything like that. You don't anticipate. I, I would anticipate that's going to be part early on trying to get Robracha in foul trouble. I know that state fans are gritting their teeth right now because, yeah, we just came off a game where AJ Hogarth missed the last eight minutes of the first half because, well, oh, you had two fouls. Oh, and of course, Izzo does it too, huh? Well, oh, 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 Trent, he does it. He does it really well. Yeah. So <laughs> we know all too well about the two fouls in the first half and you're out of here, business. Um, last question I have before we flip the script and you ask me about my Spartans here, but mm -hmm. there's something you can always count on with Iowa and it's great offense. You know, they're really good in a track meet and usually, Pretty bad defense. No, no offense. But last year, the Iowa defense was actually respectable. It was fine. So where are we this year? Is it still at the respectable levels? Is it back to the old ways of uh, we don't really do a whole lot on defense? Or what are we looking at for Iowa's defense? They have uh, really regressed back this year. They've taken yeah, a big okay. step back from what they were. In fact, you got to go back to the last time that they weren't an NCAA tournament team as bad defensively Ooh. as they are. So we're talking about going back now six years when things really cratered. It was a young team, didn't measure up defensively. They got beat by Louisiana yeah. Lafayette and South Dakota State in the non-conference. It was a bad year, and it was defense more than anything. This year, it's not at that level, but it's as bad as it's been there. A couple of okay. reasons for that. Uh, you you look at some of the things that they've done. They switch man and zone. They do that all the time. And, and something that Fran's team don't have a specific thing that they do increasingly a ton of outside of do like to bring pressure, a lot of three quarter court pressure uh, that they'll do. But they have been so inconsistent in the backcourt. Their starting guards, both Ulyss and Tony Perkins, two guys that are known more as defenders. They just haven't been very good on that end of the okay. floor. Yeah, they'll get a couple of steals and do things like that. But just on the ball, they have not been the same kind of defender that you'd anticipate. So you have that component of it. Same thing inside, because you're basically playing with just one big guy in a bracha. There's lots of times guy gets in the paint. He's going to lay off. He's not going to attack Adam. He's not going to go for the block shot. Just knowing that he has to stay out of foul trouble. It's concerning right now. Ohio state did whatever they wanted in the second half of the game on Saturday. Gotcha. They were, they were hitting shots from all over the place, getting to the paint when they wanted wide open three pointers. So this is going to be one you're looking to get right. And I, I'm sure there's a lot of fan bases that feel this way. Boy, why does this team always hit shots against us? Well, Iowa fans feel yeah. that a whole lot. This goes way back to the day of Dr. Tom Davis. I mean, you see gotcha. Riverside. They played them one time. They hit 23 three-pointers back when they were in D2 school. Oh, and Iowa no. lost to them out there as a top 10 team. Like, they're, they're just always those moments. So whoever your guy that's struggling the most, and I'll, I'll ask you that when we come back here, whoever's struggling the most probably going to have a good night at the Hawkeye D. Gotcha. Man, fair enough. Well, hey, we'll, we'll take it. We'll always take a good night uh, shooting at our own barn as well. So is it time to put me on the hot seat and grill me about it is. the Michigan State Spartans here? Sweet. Let's Let, get it popping. Let's flip it over here. All right. So, Matt, we talked about just an overview of this team. Feeling okay? Everyone's feeling okay yeah, at this we're fine. time. So, yeah. what, is the, what is the number one concern, though, as you look at this Michigan State basketball team at this moment? Yeah, it has to be the center position. No question about it. Uh, Mati Sissoko started this year, his junior year. This is his third year at Michigan State. Came in as a top four-year recruit, but started this year against Drew Timmy and Oscar Shibway and put up insane numbers and just looked good doing it as well. He even had a fast break where he hit a Euro step, and I started thinking – am I am I about to black out right now? Like, is, is this a, a lottery pick all of a sudden? He has regressed since. Those two games – have been a catfishing of some sort. It has not been good in the last, I believe, 
11 games, he has one game where he has scored above seven points. Uh, he's not getting, uh, well, you know, he is getting worked a little bit too much on post defense. And then behind him, it's not a lot. It's two freshmen, one former top 60 recruit in Jackson Kohler, who's actually had really good back-to-back games after kind of a slow start to his freshman year, but he's never going to be mistaken for this defensive stalwart, right? And the other guy, Carson Cooper, he was supposed to redshirt this year. He was on IMG Academy's B team. But since then, we only have two centers. It's like, hey, um, we we need a guy with four limbs to play here. You're not redshirting. You're actually going to play a few minutes here and there. And he's been decent, but that's decent against his expectation of, well, not playing at all this year. So it has to be what is going on inside the paint. More so defensively, rebounding can be an issue sometimes. Rutgers just had 18 offensive rebounds last week against Michigan State. Luckily, shot 54% from three, so it didn't matter. But, yeah, defensively and rebounding in the post is a concern. And offensively, too, when Mike Sissoko is in because he's not really an offensive threat either. So it's not that great in the paint for Michigan State. So you got that part. We uh, talked a little yeah. bit also about the injuries. You mentioned Malik Hall. If he's able mm-hmm. to go, and even in a limited capacity, how does that make this Michigan State team different? What is it about him that that makes this team better? What does he do that kind of complements everything they do? Yeah, it's a guy that you can throw it into the post and he can go get you a bucket. He has a lot of man-sized baskets so far this season for Michigan State when they need him, when they need someone to take over a game in the post because without him, there's no one really in the post that can just go in and get an easy two. Like, yeah, sure, we've seen A.J. Hogard do it, you know, bodies his way in there, cuts through the lane, gets a layup, or, you know, maybe he'll have a little bit of a post move sort of thing. But you are missing that post player without Malik Hall because it, it's not Joey Hauser. Well, Joey does have, like, a decent post game. He gets more of his damage done outside the arc. And, yes, while Jackson Kohler has had a good two-game stretch, Still is a little bit of a small sample size here for the kid. Um, and then Matty Sissoko, just like we talked about, it's not a guy I'm trusting to go get us two points here. So that that's really it, is just, you know, that old reliable, old faithful down there on the low block in, Sisso- or in uh, Malik Hall, and then just his veteran presence as well, which Tom Izzo just will not stop talking about in press conferences. <laughs> so uh, another thing that jumped out to me when I was looking at some numbers here mm-hmm. is defensively. Good. Yeah. Not elite. So – yeah. Izzo, along with Bo Ryan, have ruined Big Ten basketball. Sorry. They have. <laughs> with the clutch and grab and the garbage style and hold, 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 and they can't call every foul. Sure. And I hate it. It's not basketball, but hey, yeah. it's been very successful throughout the years. And I can It's winning. Yeah. That. Yes. So when you look at this Michigan State team defensively, though, they'll do that. They'll clutch, they'll grab, they'll hold, they'll play that garbage style, and the refs swallow their mm-hmm. whistle. Probably going to be another 30 point victory for Sparty here. But how defensively as this team looked at in and do you see the same thing that the metrics kind of measure up that this team isn't quite the same as some of the past Michigan State defensive teams I I think that's fair yeah I, I think it's fair especially you know not to beat a dead horse but in the post as well I don't think it'll ever be great in the post but around the perimeter you really like what you're seeing if you're a Michigan State fan like AJ Hogard okay that's a solid defender Tyson Walker this man has black belt karate hands. I mean, he is a great defender. Well, undersized, you know, six feet or maybe six foot one. One of the best defenders you'll find in the Big Ten. Then Jaden Akins, too, can more than hold his own on the perimeter there. So as far as guard and wing players go, you're feeling really good about that for your starters. Now, it's where the bench comes in. You know, guys like Pierre Brooks, he often gets lost out there on defense. But Trayvon Holloman, a freshman, good rangy wingspan. Looking pretty good as well. But yes, it is the four and five position, especially with Malik Hall out. Or even now when Malik Hall's in, because yeah, you're really wondering, are you getting 80% Malik Hall? Because that's still a solid defender, but it's not, you know, what his true potential is. Joey Hauser, he's been having flashes at defense, but again, he's never going to be mistaken for someone that's going to put you in a straight jacket by any means. So yeah, I, I hear that they're good numbers, not great. That sounds about right because it's run around the perimeter and just yeah, in the post is kind of how I rated what other guy wanted to get your perspective on and that's aj hogard uh, a mm. guy that has played three times in his uh, career against iowa so i've seen mm. yes i've watched a lot more than just the three games against iowa sure. but he has played poorly in all three of those games he has not been very good okay. and then you know watch about other times i'm like well this is a completely different guy so what what yeah. is his play now in his junior campaign what what have you seen improvements from him and oh, we're hoping that it makes it four straight games he struggles with <laughs> iowa against here but but how he's developed this season 
Yeah, he's. I, I think he's been great. Um, you know, we just had uh, Graham Couch. He's a columnist at Atlanta State Journal on, and we just had the debate. Like, does he have it? You know, has he made that leap of being one of these great Michigan State point guards? And he's either there or right on the cusp of it because it was not a great start to his senior season. And then he got benched after a four turnover game. He had this meeting with Izzo, closed doors meeting that we've heard bits and pieces of, and he has emerged as a better player, just both skill wise and leadership wise as well. So yeah, he is also the player too. When Michigan state is in trouble instead of the last two years where everyone's just kind of looking around each other being like, I'm not going to do it. Are you going to do it? No, I'm not going to. Are you going to AJ takes the game under his wing and says, Everyone relax. Fine. I'll just do it. And then more times than not, he has been getting it done. He has shown up in big spots, whether it's the game as a whole, like the road game at Penn State, absolutely smashing it in your lines, or just big spots within games, like the end of the Michigan game, for example. This is a leader of the team, both with his style of play and style of leadership. Um, what has been interesting is his shooting. He is shooting more threes. He's not elite by any stretch of the imagination, but there are some games where he can hit a big three. And I think three times this season, he's hit multiple threes in the game. But yeah, it's a uh, very hit and miss here from what his game is beyond the arc. But yeah, I, I think it's been a, a really solid season. Great season right. really for AJ Hogan. My final thing here, um, I am a daily sports wager. have been for a very long time. Ooh, okay. we, yep. We've had things and very excited about our new partnership with FanDuel. So Absolutely. I was taking a look at some numbers. Uh, I'm not a big believer in this Big Ten come NCAA tournament time. I am going to be selling Purdue. Uh, there's no doubt about it. I'm probably oh, going to yeah. have them out early. Just that, that guard play concerns me so much in one ED, well, foul performance for him. And it's going to be yeah. trouble. But I was looking at the odds to make the Final Four. Like, there's not a big, there's not a national champion. I don't think in the Big Ten this year. It's going to be a struggle for many to get to the Sweet 16, even if we mm-hmm. get eight, nine, ten teams in the tournament. But I'm looking at your Spartans, yeah. 25 to one to make the oh. Final Four again. Not win the whole thing, just yeah. get there. Izzo yeah. and March. We know the storylines. I was there in Minneapolis covering the Final Four when they were there a couple of years back. Uh, yeah. It was a lot of fun. I know this program and the way that it is. Hey, I made a lot of dumb bets in my day. But oh, same. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 20, at 25 to 1 on FanDuel right now, hey, I got a $10 free bet just sitting there winking at me. I, I think I'm putting it on Sparty. I mean, this this is going to be our third straight episode of Locked On talking about can this Michigan State team make a Final Four run, which is totally normal to do after you just lost by double digits on the road. Naturally, that funnels right into, hey, get ready for a March run talk. But we did get a listener question like, how far can this team go with Mati Sissoko playing the way he is? My thing is with Malik Hall, if you get him yeah. back, even if it's 80 or 90%, you can deploy that small ball lineup. You have A.J. Hogan at the point, Tyson Walker, Jaden Akins, Joey Hauser, Malik Hall all around him. That's four three-point shooters that you're running with A.J. Hogan. And we just saw Villanova just play six guys for an entire tournament and make a final four. They play good wing defense. They can shoot. They are veteran-led. And they're coached by Tom Izzo, too. And they get to the Final Four every year. No one expects them to. So do I think right now, like gun to head, do I think? No, of course not. It's never likely a team's going to make a Final Four. But at 25 to 1, and with the way Michigan State is built, I swear I don't have green stained glasses. I have only put Michigan State in my Final Four uh, once in my entire life. It was 2015 okay. when they were a seven seed. It, was, uh-huh. it wasn't even one of the years where they were one or a two seed. It was that year, and it worked out. I might be doing it again. I got to see the matchups, of course, when the brackets drop. But, like, I don't hate that. 25 to 1. This isn't a gambling segment, Trent. This is a financial (laughs) advice segment right now. We're going to put people on retirement right now. Oh, man, I love it. Third, it's third, great. third time in a row you got me on this conversation. Oh, this is great. Love it. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a go there. And, well, for Hawkeye fans, yes, the, the numbers are also available for Iowa to make the Final Four. It's just 35 to 1. I mean, uh, for me to really okay. make – a, a substantial wager, not throwing 10 bucks on it, not you know, sure. putting pizza money on it, something like that. To really yeah. put something down, you'd probably have to give me, well, they haven't been since the year I was born. I'm 42. Okay. Okay. The year I was gotcha. born was the last time I made a Final Four in 1980. And they've had some good teams, but it's been a long stretch. 75 to 1, 80 to 1, probably something in that range that I'd even be tempted to put something yeah. substantial down. So that's where we are right sure. now. I, I think it's one of the best bets on the board. I have a, a ton in my portfolio for college basketball already this season in the futures market. And I think I'm adding a little more on FanDuel right now. Ten bucks on Sparty with my free bet. To win 250? Doesn't feel hey, bad to me. You could use something with 250. Yeah, that, yeah, that, exactly. that, that plays. Yeah. 
Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. Well, hey, Trent, this has been awesome, man. I really do appreciate all these crossover episodes and the one with Trent Condon of Locked on Hawkeyes. Not any different. This is awesome. Hope you and all Hawkeye fans kind of enjoy Thursday. Not not like totally we enjoy won't. it to the point where you guys we win, won't. but yeah. All right, that's the spirit. There you go. Love the confidence. There. <laughs> Last time I talked to a host with this little confidence in their team was Locked on Hoosiers. That's where I talked with Jacob Rude before the football game. MSU blew a 17-point lead at home to lose the Hoosiers, so... I was on Sparty right then. Now. I remember it well. <laughs> yeah, same. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I remember it well too, Trent. So, but hey, we'll hopefully find a good win here in basketball. But hey, until then, Locked on Spartans. You guys know where to find us. Locked on Spartans over there. Locked on Hawkeyes. Your teams every single day. Now go enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Woo!